Okay, so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use uh, gears for simple projects in Fusion 360. Um, I, just a quick caveat, I'm not an engineer and I don't totally understand this stuff, but um, I know it well enough to use it for projects I make myself um, and uh, it seems to work pretty well for me. So um, I'm going to go through what these things mean and how to sort of put these things together to use gears in a project you might be interested in doing. Um, so the first thing you're going to do when you're in Fusion is go over here to add-ins and then go to scripts and add-ins and then you want to go down to spur gear. Either one of these will work, they're just different kinds of scripts and these come with, uh, with the program. So we click that one and click run. This is the dialog that comes up. Um, so I'm just going to run through this and, and show you what, what things mean insofar as I understand them. So the first one is um, the standard is metric. So I'm just, I, I use metric for pretty much everything for smaller projects anyway. So I just stick with metric with that. It makes things a little easier. Um, the next one is pressure angle. You'll see here you've got three different options for that. Um, the, the pressure angle basically, uh, it's, see, I've, so here it um, gives the direction normal to the tooth profile. So it's like the, um, the yeah, the angle where the tooth is, is pushing the other tooth, okay? Um, there, the standard values are 14 and a half, 20, and 25. 20 is the default here, and from what I understand, that's the most commonly one used. Um, what from Also from what I understand, lower pressure angle, uh, that, that'll give you less noise, also less horsepower, and then higher pressure is the opposite. So it's noisier, but it also gives you more horsepower. So let's just go with the defaults here and see what we get. So that's 14.5 for the pressure angle. And I just I didn't change anything else. Okay, that's what that gear looks like. I'm gonna do it again. Let's change this to 20. And you'll see what changed here is that, um, again, that pressure angle changed, right? So this is the one that was 14 and a half. And then this one was 20. So that angle right there is, uh, is steeper, right? Um, I'm sorry, it's not steeper. It's, it's less steep, right? It's shallower. Um, and then if we do that again, change it to 25. This is going to be even shallower, right? So it's a more of a gradual angle. So again, higher numbers apparently need ho more horsepower. So I'm guessing that's that means you've got more surface area connecting somehow. But in any case, the default has always worked for me for the projects I've done. So I'm just going to undo to get out of those. All right. So back to this. Okay. So we talked about that. The next one is module. So the module is the unit of size that indicates how big or small the gear is. Uh, it's a ratio of the reference diameter uh, divided by the number of teeth. So think of this as like a multiplier that's going to tell you how big the gear gets, right? So you can see here that it's calculated automatically, basically. So the, the module, when, when that's set to 3 and the number of teeth is at 24, you get a 72 pitch diameter. Um, then going down to the, I'll skip over for a second, the pitch diameter is basically, it's the distance at which the gear will meet a corresponding gear and it's calculated automatically. So you see here the pitch diameter, that's sort of somewhere halfway down the tooth. Uh, same thing with this bigger one. And that tells you where those two are supposed to meet. It tells you the distance, the center distance between the two. That's how you calculate that, right? So let's see what happens. If the module is set to 12.7 uh, by default, and I've got 24 teeth, then that's the pitch diameter I get. You'll notice I can't change that, right? That's, that's calculated automatically. If I change this to 12, you'll see that was about, that's, that's half the size. Maybe is it, is it exactly half the size? Yeah, it's exactly half the size. Um, so it's important, I mean, you can, you can do as many different numbers of teeth as you want, right? I can make this 36. I know that if I keep that module the same, these will work with each other. Okay, and that's that's important. So that's a really big gear for what we're doing. So I'm going to stick to three for that, and then 24, and it's 72. That's fine, right? Okay, the backlash is basically think of the backlash as tolerance between the gears. It's like the uh, what do I have here? Um, it's thought of as the tolerance between the gears. It's the gap between the tooth 
that's closed when the gear reverses directions. So it's like a little bit of a space between them. Uh, and, you know, if you have like a zero tolerance gear, that'd be a really hard thing to make with a 3D printer. But it, I, I guess it's possible. But anyway, um, it's usually a good idea to have a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a tolerance there. The default's 0.15. The root fillet radius—that's the radius where the tooth meets the uh, meets the the root. Okay, so it's the radius of this point right here. Um, if that radius is bigger, you're basically going to have a stronger tooth because it's connected more. Uh, it's got more more purchase on that um, on on sort of the center of the gear. Uh, but if you make it too big, um, the tooth won't fit in that hole. And you'll probably get an error if it's too big. I, th I don't think it lets you do things where the, the gears won't actually mesh. That looks um, way too big to me, so I'm going to go with 0.75. It seems to have worked pretty well before. And then over here, gear thickness. Um, that's just the thickness of the gear, right? That's something that's easy to change later on when you make this part. Um, that's kind of a weird number. I think I think 11 is what I want to do using these bearings I'm using. And then the hole diameter is, um, that's just the, the hole in the middle. Again, you can kind of change that thing later. Um, but let's just give it a round number, call it six. So if I click OK, there we go. So now I've got this gear, it's 24 teeth. Uh, it is 11 millimeters thick. It's got a three millimeter radius hole right there. And this green line is the, that's the pitch diameter. So it gave me this line and turned it on. So now I can see exactly where this is supposed to meet another uh, another gear. And see right there, the radius is 36. That's going to be useful for me in a second. Okay, so let's say I want to make a, a couple of gears mesh together that are a 2 to 1 ratio. So if this is 24 teeth, I, mean, I need to make one that's 12 teeth. So again, uh, I'm going to do the scripts and add-ins, go down to spur gear, run. You'll notice all these... All these um, uh, values stayed the same from last time. Um, it's a good idea at this point to, to do something like this. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. So shift command four and a Mac, and then I hold down the space bar and it's going to grab that one for me. So now I have that and I can refer to that later because it doesn't really save that information as far as I can tell. So, okay. So the only thing I'm going to change here is the number of teeth. I'll change that to 12. That'll give me a one to two gear ratio. You'll notice when I hit tab to get out of this field, the pitch diameter stayed the same. That doesn't seem right. Three, eleven, twelve diameter six. Click OK. Oh no, okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's half of that. Sorry, I was looking at a different number. So the radius here is 36, right? Radius here is 18. It tells you the diameter, which is a little might might seem a little bit confusing, but when you just click on anything in Fusion, it gives you a little heads up down here in the bottom right corner to tell you what the value of it is. So this is giving you the radius, that's sort of the default thing. So this, obviously 18 is half of this, and that's what we'd expect because all the other, uh, all the other parameters are the same. And um, these are, uh, this one's 12 teeth, this one's 24. Okay, so these are gonna come in automatically uh, on top of each other at the zero location, right? The, the distance between these, the position of these gears uh, is gonna be the radius of this right, the, the diametral pitch. So that is uh, 18, um, the diametral radius, I guess. And this is 36. So this one, one of these anyway, needs to move over by the radius of this plus the radius of this. So that's 36 plus 18. So I'm gonna right click on this uh, component over here in the browser. That's just how I like to do it. There's a million different ways to do it, but that seems easier for me. Right click, move copy. Then I'm going to move this axis over, and I can type 54, 36 plus 18, or I can do 36 plus 18 if it's some weird number and I don't haven't done the math in my head. Um, there you have it. Okay. Now the other thing you would want to do here is um, to position this the, the proper way. I'm going to click on that, right click, move copy. Um, it's centered by default. Uh, and that's fine, but um, I'm going to go on rotate over here, and I want to pick an axis so I can pick that cylinder right there, and kind of look around. Okay, and then 
it is, let's see, so it's 12 positions divided by 36, so I think we need to do 15. You basically just move it until, so we know that's an even number, 36 divided by 12 divided by 2 should give you 15, right? Because it's, yeah, because you've got, you've got two positions, there's a throat and a tooth. So anyway, you can just kind of eyeball it, right? You look in here and say, okay, I know I've got an even number. I know I've got to rotate this thing so that it's um, it's one position over, right? So if minus 15 or plus 15 doesn't matter. There you have it. Okay, so now you have two gears that are meshed with each other. Um, let's give it a base. So I'm just going to click on, actually I'm going to do a new component, good practices, I'll call this base. Uh, I'm going to do a create sketch, look at the top and then just click on that. Always capture position because things will move move around if you don't. Uh, I'm going to do a circle. Whoops, sorry, I want to do the center circle. From the origin point to click on any one of those points there. So that's like the, the extent of the gear. And I'll do another one here. Circle that middle point to there. Then I'm going to make like a, I'll make sort of a, um, egg shape here. So I'll do a line like that and then another line over here. Tangent. This is kind of arbitrary. You, you don't have to be this precise about this stuff but um, I'm just making a shape where it gives me this little background shape that looks pretty good. Stop that sketch and I'll go to the underside and screw this Picking all those profiles, minus six, just kind of an arbitrary number. Okay, so now we got a base. Go back here and activate. Good time to save. Um, mechanisms here. Okay, um, and now what I'm going to do is uh, give myself some some joints to uh, to work with these things. Um, joints are basically they give you a preview of the way that things will move right so if I take this gear and move it like that I can just kind of drag it anywhere I want um, I'm gonna give myself a, uh, a the, I'm gonna make it I'm gonna constrain it to the base so that it moves like it really would in real life so to do that I'll go to assemble and then I'm gonna do as built and joint it's a different kind of joint right so I click that the type needs to be Revolute. I'll click on this gear and this base, and then it wants a, an, an axis, right? So then I can pick any circle that is on that axis. So I could pick this one or this one, that's fine. And now you'll see it's giving me a preview that it's rotating a certain way. Click OK. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here, right? So I do another as built joint, that to that with this is the axis, and there we go. So I should be able to grab these and pull on them and they should be able to rotate. But that doesn't work because you'll see the base is moving too. The reason for that is that the base isn't grounded. We need something here in the model to be grounded otherwise everything will just move freely. Click on that, right click, ground. And I can click and move this gear and you'll see it turns. And I can do the same thing with this one, right? Okay, so uh, normally with any other kind of linkage like this, you can do something called a, a contact set. And what that does is gives you like a real um, preview of, of like the physical interactions between things. Um, that can be kind of tricky to get right. And I, I don't really recommend it at this stage. And anyway, for gears, uh, it gets really, really bogged down in terms of your processor. Like it's, it's calculating all these little uh, points where the surfaces come together to turn. So I'm going to show you a quick trick to, to make it look real and actually give you a, a sense of um, positioning and like the way things will move in relation to each other. Okay, so I'm going to do a motion link between this joint and this joint. And you'll see by default they're both going positive 360. Well, that's not how it would work, right? One of these definitely is negative because it's got to turn the other way. And one of these is moving half as much as the other. So you could just do this, like one degree here is two degrees here. 
So this does two turns for every one turn over here, and that'll give you what you need. Click OK. And now if I turn this, I'll see my other one's turning. Same thing over here. Turn and turn. And there you have it. Yeah, so that's basically how you do gears. Um, and then in the videos following this one and in the Instructable, I'm going to uh, show you how to make indexing gears and um, how to integrate these with some uh, skateboard bearings so you can make all kinds of different projects.